Hello everybody, I am sitting down today and I'm doing a little bit of a story time get ready with me. So I'm just in the middle of getting ready to go to work and I said what better time than to whip out the camera and to have the chats with you guys because I feel like I've been putting this off for a long time and I feel like now it's the time that we have the chats. So I'm in the middle of getting ready, just put like a little light base on my face and my coffee in hand. I'm gonna do my hair and then I'm out the door to go to work. Yeah, lots to catch up on. I feel like I haven't had a sit down chatty video with you guys in ages, so I feel like this is well overdue. I have had such a good year so far and we're only on month three. So in the first quarter of the year so far, I've left my job on post. I went on my first solo trip to New York. I came home and I started a new job the very next day. Then I went to Lanzarote for like a long weekend and I came home and the very next day after that, aka yesterday, I became an auntie for the very first time. So I have had a very, very exciting start of the year and it's only the 14th of March. I cannot cope. In this video, I wanna have a little sit down chit chat. Um, I've had a lot of people write to me lately and be like, you're glowing, you look so good, you look amazing lately and I appreciate it all so much like everyone has been really kind and they're telling me that like I look amazing and that I'm glowing and I really have my sparkle back and girls I actually do but I want to tell you why and how it came about because I don't want to take like full credit and like be like oh I got here so easily it has taken years to get back to where I am now. And I know I'm not fully back. I'm not fully back to like the Tanya that we all used to know and love. If you followed me for a long time, you will know that I have had very many chapters of my life. Uh, my 30 years on earth almost have been very interesting. I've worn a lot of hats in this life. But the hat that I wore most recently was one that I was very proud of. Um, and I wanted to like tell you guys a little bit about it. So. If you would have watched a couple months ago, I done like a sit down video on my YouTube channel. I think it was October and I was telling you guys like the background of my health and how like I had really bad health for a while. And I still do have really bad health, but it's not like detrimental. Like I'm not like dying or anything like that. Thank God, touch wood. Like, I mean, still every single day, this is not just here for the crack. Like still every single day I get letters from hospitals and medical professionals. I've got appointments after appointments, results, scans, tests. I have not got the best genes. Um, but if you watched my video in October, it's now since been privated because I just feel like I was very sad in it and I just don't want to look back on that. My video in October explained the fact that I had an underactive thyroid, still do, um, and I had hemochromatosis, still do, had crippling depression, coming out the other side of that now, thank God. But I basically was telling you guys how things were so bad for a few years and I didn't really like talk to anyone much about it and I withdrew myself a lot on social media over that time because it just was like not a chapter of my life that I wanted to share or that I felt worth sharing because it was so turbulent and sad. Um, but now we're coming out the other end of it and I'm like I want to talk to you guys a little bit about it because it was due, this story that I'm about to tell you was due to go live in a national newspaper this year, in the Irish Independent this year. Um, I was in touch with a journalist from the Irish Independent. They reached out to me in January and asked if I would be interested in sharing my story. And I kind of ignored it at first and then they wrote to me again and were like, I'm just wondering if you've had time to think about the proposition that we previously gave. Like if you'd ever be interested in sharing your story, we would, do so in like a sensitive way and I was like do you know what maybe I am interested in sharing my story publicly and it's not like for publicity or anything of the sort because there's nothing that I can gain from this like at all like if anyone thinks that that's why I'm doing this, this that's not like where I was coming from I was like maybe I could help someone who was once in the predicament that I found myself in Um. so obviously if you followed me or like know me in real life whatever you know that I have an underactive thyroid so I never really knew what an underactive thyroid was, didn't know what thyroid was, let alone like an underactive one. Um, so you have a thyroid in your neck, it's a butterfly shaped gland. Mine is underactive, so it doesn't do the jobs that it's meant to do. It's a lazy little bollocks, to be honest. 
some people have overactive ones and they're like overproduced in hormones mine is underproducing hormones and they're essential hormones to like so many of your bodily functions so the main ones are like the t3 and the t4 hormone like i'm not a medical professional by any means but um i know that your thyroid has so many different functions but the main ones is like controlling your metabolism metabolizing your food breaking your food down from like food to energy levels and all that jazz um mine doesn't do that mine is like a lazy shy bag so when your thyroid basically like slows down or is underactive or underperforming it's not producing essential hormones to metabolize your food and that's why your metabolism kind of crashes and that's why people end up gaining weight over it so not a lot of people know this because I've never really talked about it. If you know me in real life and you live local, you may have seen me, but I know I withdrew myself off social media for like a year because things got so bad. But I ended up putting on like almost seven stone in like three years or like I think the majority of it I put on in like the first two years and then the third year I put on like an extra stone. So I think I done like six stone in two years and then the seven stone in the third year. Um, and I was like this is a fucking joke because in 2020 when I got diagnosed with the underactive thyroid I was fit strong healthy active I was in my wellness girly era I was lifting weights I was going to spin classes I was walking my dogs I was probably like 65 kg of like solid muscle I was a gym girly I'd recently lost like three stone through fitness and exercise and calorie deficit and stuff like that like I'd really become accustomed to like looking after my body and appreciating like health and wellness until then I ended up crashing became really lethargic like actually exhausted having to take to the bed at like lunchtime most days for naps because I felt like I'd been injected with like, injected with like a sedative um, and then my weight started to pile on and I was like girls I'm actually probably working out and like looking after myself more in lockdown because I don't have a full-time job to go to like I kind of just prioritized like working out and we'd set up like a little gym in the back garden and stuff and um, so I was very confused so anyway as you know this is just like a brief synopsis but as you know I went then had blood tests done and that's when the thyroid came back as underactive they also discovered that I had like hemochromatosis which is like too much iron in the blood. Um, I actually have to go for like another liver <laughs> test like in two weeks, I think. My health is just shocking bad um, and it all came out of nowhere. But anyway, um, yeah, came back with the underactive thyroid and then that's when the games began. Like that's when I, in two years, put on six and a half stone and then in the third year, I put on the seventh stone. So as you can imagine, like life was dire. I was struggling to get up out of bed in the mornings. I didn't socialize. I just wanted to stay at home and watch TV because I didn't want to leave my house in case people saw me. And um, they would have seen like me be like really fit and active and like pounding the pavements out of it. And then now they're seeing me and I'm like seven stone extra and uh, like crippled with like arthritis symptoms because of the rapid weight gain covered in stretch marks depressed like I was literally living my worst life obviously at the back of all this I was suffering really bad mentally because I was struggling to come to terms with all these like sudden changes that no one really had any answers for um and yeah thankfully I worked alongside a very good like mental health team and like was given some medication to try and combat that like obviously that was just like to try and combat that like that wasn't gonna fix my mental health like my mental health was like deteriorating so bad because I went from being a like young fit healthy active sexy little girl to being like this old woman who now was taking so many medications who could barely like walk to the shop to get groceries without being in bits and who struggled to keep up with her friends on hikes without having to take like arthritis pain medication like I was literally living my worst life and I don't think I really vocalized it too much because I didn't want people to like think I was moaning and looking back I'm like girl you had so much to moan about why didn't you moan <laughs> even though a lot of this was like out of my control I internalized it so bad and I blamed myself on creating these problems which I don't know why I done that but I ended up being in a very bad mental headspace um, which is really sad looking back on because I actually did have really bad suicidal ideations because I was 
not wanting to wake up in the mornings to continue living the life that I was living. Um, all my peers were moving on with their lives, lockdown was lifted, life was resuming back to normal for so many people. But the way that I went into lockdown was most definitely not the way that I was coming out of lockdown. Like I was coming out of lockdown like seven stone, heavier, like with so many ailments and so many like medications and it was just not pleasant. I went back to my doctor and I was like, look, I can't exercise really properly right now because my body is so sore because of the rapid weight gain. My joints were fucking breaking. Um, I'm trying to be in like a natural calorie deficit. Like I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying and my weight is still increasing. So what are we gonna do here? He said to me, that I was overproducing the hunger hormone called ghrelin, which I'd never heard of again. But he said, I'm overproducing that hunger hormone, which is derived or created from the bottom portion of your stomach. He said, that's where that hormone lives and you're producing too much of it. Talk about hormonal imbalance, honey. Um, I was producing too much of that hormone and then I wasn't producing enough of the hormone in my thyroid to <clears throat> counteract or to like break down the foods that I was eating uh, so it was just a recipe for disaster I was just piling on hormonal weight gain and like there was nothing that we could do to stop it um, which was which was great so I went to him and I was like well what what can we do right now like what's the steps that I can take now to try and like even stop the weight gain like cap the weight gain like because I can't keep gradually gaining weight like I'm gonna end up immobile I'm gonna end up needing people to wipe my arse like I'm gonna end up really really not able to live like a normal life like I'm gonna become dependent on people like to have to do things for me because I'm not gonna be able to keep up and he said, let's try Ozempic. So Ozempic was like a new thing at the time. It wasn't new, obviously it's been around for a long time for diabetic patients, but Ozempic is basically like a diabetes drug that you inject into yourself. And it's meant to control like your blood sugars and your appetite and stuff like that. So he said, let's trial you on Ozempic to see if you can lose some of the hormonal weight gain. And I was like, I'll fucking try anything. Give me anything at this stage and I will try it. So I tried it for like six months it was really expensive. In those six months, I lost, drum roll please, three pounds. Three pounds was all I lost. And it cost me about, I don't know, it cost me hundreds of euro anyway for those six months of shite anyway. And all it done was make me puke, make me really turn off the smells and the tastes of foods and made me shit myself. So no wonder people are losing weight on this drug. If that's the, the like, effects that it has on people obviously it works for some people it did not work for me my hormones or something were like negative we're not taking this ozempic get this bitch out of here so anyway went back to him and i was like the ozempic's not working like i'm paying hundreds every month for this drug that's making me feel violently ill it's not making me lose any weight like i thought like after six months of being on it i'd have lost like stones at this stage especially because i had so much to lose and he's like well the next step is dun -dun -dun weight loss surgery I was like excuse me he was like the next step for you is weight loss surgery he said the only way that we were going to prevent my body from continually gaining weight was to take out that portion of my stomach where the hunger hormone was deriving from I was like me me weight loss surgery I thought weight loss surgery was for the girls on the telly the 600 pound sisters the my 1000 pound lifers I thought like it's for the super, super morbidly obese people. And he was like, no, this is the preventative method for you. Your hormones are obviously not like doing their thing and you're gonna end up the way that you said, you're gonna end up immobile or you're gonna end up with like zero quality of life if we don't nip this in the bud. And I was like, okay, sign me up. I was literally like, I'll do anything. I'll do anything that this doctor is saying to me because I want help and I'm not living life. And as I said, I was having suicidal ideations. Like I was not living the life of like an early mid 20 something year old. So I said, sign me up, put me on the list, whatever. And he was like, great, put me on the list, went through all the paperwork with me. Then a couple of weeks later, I get a letter from the HSE to say that I was now successfully added to the wait list for weight loss surgery. And the estimated time of getting the ball rolling was six and a half years six and a half years girl that's that's what they told me and I was like well that's unreal because I'm not actually going to be here in six and a half years I went over to my doctor and I was like what are the next options I'm not going to be able to wait six and a half years in six and a half years I'm going to have gained 
tens of stones like be in my mid 30s I'm gonna have gained way more weight like this is just not the solution it's like there has to be something else and he said oh there is like you could pay to get this procedure done privately and I was like okay like I'm not from a very big financial <laughs> background but um what are we talking here and he said it ranges from between nine to thirteen thousand euro nine to thirteen thousand euro is what he said would would cost to go private and that was just like an estimate like that wasn't like any hidden costs or fees or anything like that and I was like okay I don't have that money but look let me go to the credit union and ask and he was like well would like family members not be able to help you out and I was like I think not sir I don't think so and in my head I was like right it is a lot of money but it is like my life like my life is obviously invaluable so like there's no price on like saving my life so what do I do here and then he comes back to me and he's like, oh, there is the option to go, like he, he said it so off the cuff, he's like, there is the option to go abroad. Like this should have been said so much faster, but he's like, there is that option to go abroad as well. And I was like, I'm not going to Turkey. I'm not putting myself under the knife in Tur Turkey. Like I'm like each to their own. If you want to do that, do that. But I just was like really nervous and I hadn't really heard many good stories at the time. Since then, I have had heard some really good success stories and stuff, but I was just being very prejudiced, which was really bad. But I was like, I'm not going to Turkey, I'm not going to Turkey. So no, I'll find the money in Ireland to get it done. He's like, I'm not talking about going to Turkey. I'm talking about going to somewhere in Europe that the HSE has recommended. And I was like, tell me more, doctor. So he then proceeded to tell me that there is a list of European clinics that the HSE recommend. And they're actually on this list that if you go to any of these specific ones the HSC has listed, you can also then apply for the HSC to cover the cost of the surgery. And I was like, what? So the HSC are going to do it for free for me in Ireland if I wait six and a half years. But they're also going to do it for free for me if I go to somewhere in Europe that they've approved of that I know is like legit and above board. And he said, yeah, but the clincher is you have to pay for the surgery out of your pocket first and then you apply for the refund and not everyone is eligible but that's the risk that you have to take. And I was like, well, what price are we talking about in these European countries? And he said, oh, like it's definitely half the price. So I was like, okay, well, that's something that I could do. Like I, I could financially like sort that that much out. Like it's not nine to 13 grand, it's like half that. I was like, I could do that. Um, So I said, give me the list doctor. So he gave me the list of clinics and practices and countries that were recommended and I was like right I'm gonna get this ball rolling I'm gonna fly to one of these countries have this operation done save my life and regain my zest for living again I went to start planning this and it was so overwhelming and I was like I don't know who I thought I was but I'm not able to plan myself to go to a foreign country to go and have a procedure done a the only language that I speak is English B, I don't really have like any medical knowledge of like what I really need or whatever, like I need help. So with my research, I discovered there was a clinic in Dublin or like an organization in Dublin who basically take that job off your hands. Now, obviously they, they charged me for doing this, but it was like worth every cent because they arranged everything from top to bottom. So they arranged, here we go they arranged for me to go to Lithuania to have my procedure done and I went and had it done for a fraction of the price I saved my life uh went by myself and got it done on my own accord people wanted to come with me and accompany me and I said no it was something that I mentally and physically and spiritually needed to do alone um and yeah so let's get to the nitty-gritty so anyway this company arranged for me to fly to Lithuania to have uh first of all they put me in touch with the surgeon who was going to perform my surgery I mean, we had like facetimes we had like chats and he recommended the exact same procedure that my own doctor recommended he recommended that the part of my stomach that was overproducing this hormone was cut out so people know that as a gastric sleeve so a gastric sleeve is whereby they cut off the bottom portion of your stomach 85 percent to be exact and they discard that bitch and they sew you back up and you just now have like a smaller banana sized stomach as a pouch instead of like a bigger stomach so I had that done so my hormones are a lot more balanced now 
Um, so yeah, I flew over to Lithuania. I didn't tell anyone I was going. I told my immediate family, like the people that live under my roof. And I told two of my aunties and that was li literally it. I didn't tell any of my best friends because I didn't want them to worry about me. I went over and they had arranged everything. Like I obviously had to pay for everything out of pocket. And then when I got home, I could apply for my refund and stuff. So I flew over with Aer Lingus. I landed at the airport. It was like a three hour flight. Everyone on my flight was going for surgery. You could just tell. There were a couple of Lithuanians who were like flying home obviously, but then all the Irish people, it was so funny. Like when we got to the airport, all the like taxi drivers with the things were from like clinics and surgeries and stuff. Um, so I landed and my chauffeur was there and he had my name waiting for me and he brought me to my hotel. So I had to put myself up in a hotel. I actually went for a week in total um, and the reason being is because you have to stay in hospital for two nights and then you're not cleared to fly after your procedure up until like after five days so it was like a week in total so he brought me to my hotel he said that if I needed anything that he was on whatsapp like 24 7 he was a lovely lovely guy got to my hotel had a little walk around I vlogged the whole thing so I think eventually I will upload part of the vlog and stuff it's just really hard to look back on because I'm obviously like in a very desperate state in my life and I'm carrying all that like excess hormonal weight that was weighing me down physically and mentally and um, so I checked into my hotel and then the very next morning I was collected for like my blood tests my check-in like all my tests my weight my bloods my blood pressure all that jazz and then the very next morning after that I went in and I had my sleeve surgery I got the 85% of my stomach taken out keyhole vibes so I only have like three tiny little scars across my abdomen I have one small little scar in my sternum and it literally saved my life like saved my life obviously after you've had a surgery like that done you are really restricted for the first couple of weeks on what you can eat because your stomach is still healing after being chopped. Um, so you're on like a liquid diet, then you're on like a puree diet, then you're on a soft diet, and now I'm back to eating. You will see if you watch my Instagram stories or my vlogs or whatever, I eat everything that I want. I'm not like cornered into just eating salads or just eating protein shakes or anything like that. Like I am eating everything that I want. I went to New York, I ate rings around me, I went to Lanzarote, I ate out like for four nights in a row. I just can't do big portions, so I have like so I have very small portions. Um but no, I'm very lucky in the sense that I've healed really well now. I can have bread, pasta, crisps, chips, chocolate, goujons, pizza, I can have everything I want. I just have to have it in smaller quantities. I have to listen to my body to when it's full. I do follow a lot of girls and boys on TikTok and stuff who've had the surgery done who don't listen to their body when their body says I'm full now and they overeat and then they puke. I've never done that, not once. My signals are very loud when I'm full and full, you know, that kind of way. Um, the only downside so far is that after three months I started to lose a little bit of hair and I would not have had a great head of hair to start with in the first place. So I've experienced a little bit of hair loss. Um, aside from that the only things that I have to do aside from watching my hair um, aside from managing my hair loss the only other things that I have to do every day are take vitamins and supplements because with having such a smaller stomach I don't absorb as many nutrients and stuff that a normal person would and um, so manage my hair loss take my vitamins and my supplements and hit my protein goal so I just have to make sure that I'm consuming a certain amount of grams of protein every day and I am dandy and um, like I'm back up now eating like a normal amount of calories every day like I'm not going to talk exact figures and stuff because I don't want people to be like comparing and contrasting and stuff like that but I'm back eating like a normal healthy amount of calories for an adult female so it's a win-win so my hormones are a lot more balanced um also when I was like seven stone overweight and my hormones were in disarray I lost my period my period arrived back like three weeks after I had my surgery and I have a regular cycle every month and um, so my hormones are definitely a lot more balanced 
I don't get that like really bad hunger feeling that people get uh, typically because I don't have that hormone part of my stomach. I have to go easy on fizzy drinks. Um, fizzy drinks are not really recommended, but I do have the occasional one. I just let the fizz kind of go out of it. Um, aside from that, I'm not allowed to eat and drink at the same time. I have to allow 30 minutes. If I want to drink something after I've eaten, I have to allow like a 30 minute window just because otherwise my stomach pouch is so small if I'm filling that up with liquid as well as food it's going to like out my bum hole <laughs> it hasn't happened yet either I'm glad to say but yeah I just felt like sharing this little story like I'm obviously getting a lot of people saying like oh my god you look so well and I'm like well I do look so well in comparison to what I did look like but I still don't look as well as what I know I will look Um, I'm definitely going to be back to the person that I was pre-hormone crash um, they estimate that in 10 months I think it is I'm going to lose 6 stone and after 12 months I'm not going to lose anymore like I'll stabilise so it's month November, December, January, February, March it's month 5 and I've lost 4 stone so it's going in the right direction girls even if I just lost the 6 or 7 stone that I hormonally gained and then adapted my lifestyle to losing the rest of the weight myself that would be ideal so obviously I didn't go and have like liposuction I didn't go and have a tummy tuck I didn't go and have fat removal I didn't go and have any of those cosmetic procedures this was like a medical procedure I had 85% of my stomach organ taken out so all of the weight loss is like weight loss that I've like lost myself um yes obviously it's just a tool it's a weight loss tool it's not like I can't go around and like eat crisps and chocolate all day long and expect to lose weight. You have to completely overhaul your life. I'm going to the gym, I'm going walking, I'm doing spin classes, I'm hitting my protein goals, I'm managing my calories, like I'm being very mindful and I'm using the tool to its full advantage so that I will get back to where I once was and I will never take my health or my hormones or anything for granted ever again. It's just absolutely mind boggling the things that like we go through internally that like no one on the outside would know looking in and like that's the funny thing like a lot of people who are watching this video now probably don't even know that I like was seven stone overweight because I withdrew myself off social media and I wasn't putting photos of myself up but I have photos and I will have inserted them hopefully throughout this video or if not now um I was covered in stretch marks because of the rapidness of the weight gain I was swollen I was sad I was depressed I had no quality of life but now I do <laughs> now my life is literally on the up I have so much to look forward to as I said I've just become an auntie I have my mental health almost back to where it needs to be and um, some days are still touch and go but that has nothing to do with my weight anymore that's just life like life is never going to be like by the book you know what I mean um but yeah if I can help one person like I know that a lot of girls with like PCOS and endometriosis and thyroid issues and like there's so many hormonal issues that like come with unexpected mountains of weight gain. <laughs> this was my prevention and this was my hopefully cure. Um, I never thought the girl who was like 65 kg lifting weights would be going for bariatric weight loss surgery in three years time if I could go back and tell 2020 Tanya that she was going to be lying up on an operating table getting bariatric weight loss surgery she'd have laughed in your face and been like that's hilarious because I love the gym and I love working out and I love my calorie deficit but sometimes hormones and like your body just take over and you have no control so yeah that is my story I really like I had notes I had like a whole like couple of pages of notes to talk through and I never even looked at this once so I've probably missed a load of key factors and when I'm probably editing this I'm gonna be like bitch you forgot to say x y and z but look I feel like this was more authentic and more natural this was just like a little sit down spill the tea kind of video and um, I actually have to go to work now but if there is anything that you would like to know questions anything 
let me know because I as you know I'm an open book I've just told you my whole life story I tell everyone my whole life story and it's not because I'm a blabbermouth it's just like I feel like I was put on this earth to help people to share my stories and I feel like God chose me to go through all the battles so that I could come out the other side of it and tell people how they were and how I endured them and all that jazz but no I have to say um then I come home from the surgery and like six weeks later I think I started to tell my friends and they were all overjoyed for me and then I started to tell my family and now I'm telling you guys gradually I'm telling more and more people because it's not like a big dirty secret like I didn't go and have like a BBL or like boobs like and if I did that's perfectly fine too it's my body my choice this was like a medical procedure that I was told to get to save my life and I done that and it has and I just have my zest for life back as you know I'm turning 30 this year I'm having a fucking party I already have my dress in that wardrobe granted I got it in a couple of sizes smaller than I needed but I'm gonna fit into it and I'm gonna go on my girls holiday and I'm not gonna be like body conscious and I'm not gonna be comparing and contrasting myself to people who have not gone through what I've gone through um yeah we all have our own crosses to bear and this was a very big cross that I had to bear but it was not impossible and i bared that cross and I'm out the other side of it and what doesn't kill you makes you feckin' stronger girlies you know what I mean I don't want people to think that I'm coming on and like I'm promoting like going for surgery or tweaking your body or anything like that this was like a hormonal medical procedure and I'm very happy to say that the HSE did cover my cost of surgery now they don't cover the cost of your flights or your accommodation or of course any of your spending money while you're in that foreign country but they covered the medical costs of the surgery so I was reimbursed it did take like four months of like relentless like back and forth they were like rejecting me rejecting me and then my doctor was like stop fucking rejecting her she will be reimbursed she deserves it she had this comorbidity she had this she had this 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 and then they were like okay yeah no you are you're a perfect candidate so they reimbursed me so I'm very very grateful uh, I just think it's such a shame that not a lot of people know about that um, scheme the cross-border directive I didn't know about it um, but people who are in a similar situation who need a medical procedure in Ireland who are on wait lists like definitely look into it and see if the procedure that you need is covered because if you're in the position that you can pay forward and get it done you can then be reimbursed and you can put yourself years ahead of yourself um, but yeah that's it I think girlies I don't really know what else to say I hope you've received this video well <sighs> and I'm not doing this to like blow my own flute or anything like that but I'm just like I would love to start sharing parts of my journey with you and it would just be really random if I started uploading like what I eat in a day with a gastric sleeve people would be like what so this is my story and yeah um, I'd love to share any knowledge or any thing with you guys but yeah, if I don't go to work now, I'm going to be late. But thank you so much for listening to my TED Talk. I hope you guys enjoy. And as I said, any questions at all. I'll probably do like a separate like weight loss surgery Q&A video. Um, but yeah, that is me, girlies. I better leg it out the door. Thank you so much for listening and for watching and for all your support. These are always so good to me. Like I always say to people, like I don't understand how I ended up so lucky on social media. Like I'd say maybe twice or three times a year, I get like a bit of a sassy comment from someone but I never receive any hate touch wood I don't jinx myself now but I never receive any hate everyone is always so supportive so encouraging and so complimentary of me and I just really hope that that's the way that it stays but once you guys continue to be nice to me I'll continue to be open and honest with you and we'll get each other through this crazy little thing called life y'all <laughs> but no very excited for the year ahead very excited for my life very excited for everything and I'm excited to not be in so much pain and so much turmoil and my life is just so much less chaotic now that I have a control over my health yeah taking back control feels fucking good after so many years of literally waking up with question marks above my head every single day um but yeah and the very 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 last thing I'm gonna say is for anyone who thinks oh she took the easy way out she obviously like let herself go and like piled on a load of weight and then turned and chopped out her stomach for like help like 
that's not the case. And even if it was, even if I let myself go and I gained all this weight naturally and I decided to go and get my stomach taken out in order to prevent myself from getting any more weight, so be it. If I was in that position, like you have to just let people do what like people do, you know what I mean? You have to let people live their lives and life is hard enough without people judging and all that jazz but just that is not like if people say like you took the easy way do you think the easiest thing for me to do was to go to Lithuania and get 85% of my stomach taken out and thrown in the bin sewed back up recover by myself fly home and adapt to a whole new lifestyle that was not easy let me tell you it was not all glamorous all the time I just really made it work and soldiered on but yeah I just feel like really relieved now that everyone knows and if I can help anyone if anyone wants any advice let me know um yeah mm, mind yourselves and mind each other especially mind each other because no one knows what the fuck anyone is going through you guys didn't know that I was going through all this and here I am out the other side of it now but yeah anyway have to go or I'm gonna get sacked love you bye